Hello everybody, this is Katya, and I welcome you to a new video on my YouTube channel. This evening I'm wearing a short black skirt with a striped, black and white striped tube top, and also I have on my Steve Madden ankle length boots, which are uh, very, I, I like them very much, and I think they go well with a lot of the things that I have in my wardrobe. You've seen them before, so what I want to do this evening in addition to just briefly showing you this uh, outfit that I have, is I want to make a confession. As many of you have noticed, um, I do wear a crucifix around my neck, and so my confession is that um, I am a religious person, I am a Christian, I do believe in God, and in fact, uh, I am a Roman Catholic and have been for many years. Needless to say, I'm a very progressive Roman Catholic, and I have a lot of questions and problems with some of the things that the Church has done over the years. But I make this confession not because I want to uh, convert anybody or to preach anything to anybody. That's really your decision. Uh, you have to make up your own minds about those things. But I wanted to mention it because this evening I, I wanted to talk about an experience that I had recently when I went to Mass this last Sunday. So let me just briefly pull up a chair and take a seat and tell you a little bit about this experience that I had. So as many of you know from watching the news, recently the uh, child sexual abuse scandal has resurfaced in the Catholic Church, particularly on the East Coast uh, in the Philadelphia area, in fact in Pennsylvania, and I actually went to school at the University of Pennsylvania. I got my uh, PhD in philosophy there. And um, when I became a Roman Catholic, uh, it was during that time that I was living in Philadelphia. And I also met my spouse, a wonderful man who, whom I love very much. So I have been a Roman Catholic for some time. And this scandal that has recently resurfaced uh, really had to do with hundreds of priests over the years, maybe the last 50, 60, or even 70 years, who had abused young people and then had been sheltered or protected by the bishops and perhaps even cardinals who simply shuffled them to another diocese or, I'm sorry, another parish um, and where they could abuse more children. So let me just get to the point without belaboring this. Uh, during Mass, instead of the priest giving a homily, uh, the deacon actually read a letter from our uh, bishop in, the, in this diocese. And it was a very thoughtful letter that the bishop wrote in which he uh, was talking about the need to develop new procedures for reporting abuse and for responding more effectively to abuse. And that was fine. I think that there were a lot of good sentiments there. Uh, I would like to see them backed up with some actions. Uh, I think on two fronts, one thing is that we need to prevent that sort of thing as much as possible from ever happening again. And the other thing is that to the people who have been victimized, there needs to be some justice, even if uh, the statute of limitations in many of these cases has passed, so that there may not be any civil uh, legal remedy. I think the church has the authority to levy penalties, ecclesiastical pen penalties, so that people who have either abused children or protected people uh, who have abused children, that means priests who have done that and bishops who have protected them, they need to be laicized or removed, from, uh, no longer have the kind of uh, churchly authority that they have, and certainly the, the, the abuser should never ever again be allowed to come anywhere near children or young people. But anyway, what happened in the Mass was after the the deacon read the bishop's letter, then the priest proceeded to kneel at the altar and basically went through what I might call a sort of communal rite of penitence, a penitential, penitential rite, where he was asking on behalf of all of us for forgiveness, and it was almost like a collective mea culpa, mea culpa. Now, there was something I have to say that sat, didn't sit well with me about that, and I don't want to be overly critical, but I felt, when I was listening to that, I felt that it really was not quite fair, because 
Certainly, I have never engaged in any kind of sexual abuse against children or anybody else for that matter, nor have I ever protected someone who has done that, nor would I suspect how many of the people in my parish who were present at the Mass that day in the congregation, they have not abused young people or protect, protected anyone who has. And so it was a little strange to me why we were asking for forgiveness. I understand we would express sorrow that it happened, and we would pray for the victims, and we would try to help people um, who have been victimized and also to prevent it from happening again. But I didn't really feel that we needed to confess anything. The people who need to confess are the priests and the religious um, who abuse children, and especially the bishops and the cardinals who protected the pedophile priests. Uh, those are the people who need to be asking for forgiveness. So that's a theological point that I wanted to make. And I don't want to dwell on it. I just wanted to share my impression um, uh, and, and my reason for it. But let me just say one thing about this, and I think I want to say this not just to people who are Christians or not, or people who have faith in God or not, but anybody who's really disturbed by this terrible wave of abuse. I think sometimes it's easy to feel very helpless about that, and so what can we do? We, we, we can't change the past, but maybe it's an opportunity for us to make a more positive contribution. So, for example, in my parish, there are places in the vestibule where you can donate clothing to immigrant families, people who have been separated, uh, immigrants who have been separated from their children by the very unwise policies of the current administration in the United States, in my opinion. Uh, you could, so we could donate clothing and food to that, or maybe somebody could become a volunteer and work with young people, help them with their reading skills. There are many wonderful programs in the schools that help um, children who have reading difficulties improve their reading. Uh, I've actually participated in one for about four or five years now. Um, so there are things to do when you start to feel frustrated and you start to feel angry about this issue and really any other particular issue that might happen in a communal setting, maybe it would help to try to be more proactive and take that negative energy and try to put it into something positive. I don't always do a very good job of that, but it is something that I have found when I try to do it, at least try to do it, then I feel better and I, I feel not so powerless, not so helpless. So that's basically all I wanted to say tonight. Maybe in another video at some time I will say something more about why I have faith or so how I came to have faith and why that's a very important part of my life. I think it was also difficult to, for me as a cross-dresser and as a gay person in the Mass to be, you have the feeling that we were being asked to, uh, we were being uh, led to ask forgiveness for something because let's be honest, many times in the Catholic Church and other churches, gay people and trans people and cross churches, people on the margins have been not only marginalized but even demonized. And so it sort of adds insult to injury if we are being asked to express forgiveness for something that we really didn't, at least most of us, I think, didn't have anything to do with that, and I know that I certainly didn't. But anyway, let's try to be positive, and maybe when we feel these clouds of negativity or uh, helplessness arising, look for positive ways that we can, where we can make contributions to help some of the very people who've been victimized or maybe people who come from that particular demographic, children or migrants or whatever it may be. So that's all I wanted to say tonight. I thank you again for being patient with me, and I hope that everybody has a good night. And let me just show you my outfit one more time, which is very comfortable, and makes me feel almost like one of the Go-Go's, although I'm not. And I do hope that everybody will have a very good evening, and I hope that you will continue to join me in these videos. Again, I appreciate all of those who, of you who have been watching and who have been making very nice comments. 
So this is Katya, and I wish everybody a wonderful evening, a wonderful, safe, and restful evening. Bye-bye.